Good afternoon. This is his helicopter going by. I don't think you can hear it on the camera, so it should be okay. Uh, welcome to my daily Facebook Live. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. If you watch my recent broadcast, you'll know how much I talk about that and how much I'm passionate about that. Um, today's topic, actually, this, this is, by the way, number 249 in ongoing series of daily Facebook Live. So this is number, I think in sequence, if it's daily, it's about 220 in, in, in series daily. So I've been going, going strong on this for a while now. And uh, hi, good to have you here. Thanks for joining me. And by the way, this is Facebook Live now, but if you watch it on YouTube, it's where it came from. So the comments and stuff that I can respond to on Facebook Live, you won't see on YouTube. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is messages from the masculine to inspire the feminine heart, but I do speak to both sides of the conversation. And today's topic is going to be like that. Um, this is a um, fresh topic that came up in conversation with a friend of mine earlier today. And um, actually, it was a friend's post from England earlier today, and I'm going to t I'll share it with her when I get done. And also a friend I was having a conversation with today as well that sort of prompted this idea about social media and dating. So we'll get into that. So if you haven't watched my broadcast before, let me, I'll let you know that I do these every day. This is number, say, 249 in an ongoing series. I don't know when I'm going to finish. If I do, I'll keep going forever. I don't know. We'll see. But right now I'm doing daily, which is really working because stuff keeps coming through. And apparently people love them, so I'm going to keep sharing. And uh, good to have you here. Thanks for joining me. Um, if you want to re watch my other broadcasts, I'll tell you about that later on. But a quick plug, you go to my business page on YouTube, on Facebook. You see them there. And also my YouTube and also my personal page. Um, also my, sorry, on my website. But let's get on with this topic, shall we? This is number 249. This one is about social media and dating. And in particular, I want to play with it with two different um, focuses because of the two different conversations I had. One was, um, well, let me start with this way. If you met somebody in real life, the IRL, as they say, in the abbreviation for all the fancy people, and you were going out with them for a while, would you ask them if you could see their, find out their social media connections so you can find out more about them behind the scenes? Like what they're like when you see them in their personal lives. Would it sound kind of weird? The way my friend experienced this, it was definitely weird because they'd been going out, they had a four hour conversation, they really get to know each other and he wanted to see pictures of her. Now he'd been sitting with her in person for that evening and then the next day he texted and thanks for the get together and said, I'd love to see more pictures of you, where are you on social media? And to be honest, it came across as very creepy because it seems like when you meet them, I mean, to me, the idea is you meet them on, on um, social media first or on a dating site, you meet them in person. If you want to see them on social media, isn't that going backwards? Especially if you already meet them physically, you've got to see that person in their wholeness, who they are in their real life. It seems a bit odd for me. Now, the other piece I want to spin to, and this is more of the folks I want to put into this, is social media, when it's used, one, to meet somebody, and two, to whine about your relationship, because some people do that. If you, I know my friends do, and I sometimes have to comment on the wall saying, you know, if you want to take this offline, I can help you, but if you want to do it on here, I'm going to step away. The challenge with social media for a lot of people, um, I'm not sure if I'm trying to think over the 250 broadcasts have done this before. I don't think I have. Oh, a fresh one. Great, new topic. So the social media thing that I talk about, or I'm aware of, is that people, I've said before, this I have said, that Meeting somebody on Facebook is a lot easier than meeting somebody on Match.com or on Tinder because nine times out of ten, what they put on social media is much more transparent, exposing, and real than the facade they might put on when they put it onto a Tinder or a profile, something like that. So I see a lot of people in there. Thanks for joining me. Um, so, I mean, maybe you experience this yourself. So this is meant to be some informative information, but maybe it'll be something you'll respond to. You may go, oh, been there, done that. That didn't work. So I firmly believe, frankly, that Facebook could put a lot of these dating sites out of action because there's so many millions of people on Facebook that you could get to meet somebody here that you could build a romance with. And just to talk a little, little aside how weird it can be using your online connections, I was reading an article yesterday that I saw on Facebook originally how this couple met on a, um, well, there's MM, MMRPGs, the multi multi the multiplayer role-playing games, those things. These two people met. He was in England. She was in, I think, New York, in America. Both, they're both like late teens, early 20s. They met in the game. 
They built up a friendship over the game and through the, tech, the messaging ability. They finally met over social media. Then they met by phone. They're now married and both gone through their master's degrees. So anything is possible in terms of meeting somebody for romantic interest. So why not Facebook? I don't think Twitter would work, but why not Facebook? It's a place where you get to find out, one, if you've got common friends, you do a lot more research. I mean, even some of the dating apps I've been on, because I do explore some of these, they actually note in the app how many common friends you have in social media. Well, if you're already on social media, why do you need to go through the app? That's one side. That's the introduction side. Let's, let's, speak, let's spin it to the other side for a second, because this is a piece that really was more evocative for me. It was when people, and I'm not going to gendify, gendify, an interesting word, I'm not going to apply a gender to either which side of this is, but I've had, I've witnessed friends, and friends reaching out over social media, which is different, that's not the same as blasting out to the world, but putting it on their Facebook page about their most recent relationship challenge, upset, breakup, hurt feelings, cheating, whatever that thing is, and sharing their wounds publicly. Now, for some people, it can be cathartic, it can be healing, but for some people, it's almost like, look at me, look at what I've been through and how much I've suffered, which is bullshit, to be blunt. If you're going through suffering, if you're going through, re- if you're going through pain and hurt and feelings, advertising on social media may not be your best choice. I, in fact, recommend you do it with somebody in person because the healing happens a lot faster when you do it privately with a friend or a counselor or a coach or a confidant, something like that, than just by putting it out on social media because nine times out of ten, the comments and feedback you'll receive will have a range in them. Some will be, go, well, some will be on the plane of, you can do better, you're better off without them, you'll be fine. And some will be derogatory. I'm not going to get into those. And some of them might just be banal. They don't have any value. So why not get real help with somebody in person, in real life? So this whole social media and dating conversation has multiple spokes. And that's why I'm putting these out there as, as reminders to you. It's a place I recommend, I personally recommend, as a place to explore and meet new people, certainly. Um, I've actually met people on social media first because I was interested in about what they posted on a friend's wall. We got to know each other and we met in person, which is kind of cool. It can get kind of creepy too, so you've got to do your own, re- your own research and um, homework, as it were, to be clear. I don't believe social media is a good place to hang out your dirty laundry in terms of your relationship challenges. That doesn't seem to be... I mean, let me put this. Oh, there's another piece. There it was. I, was waiting, I saw another piece out there. I couldn't see what it was and just picked it up. But the, using social media as you hang out your dirty laundry is really a way of trying to play the victim at being a narcissist at the same time in some way. It's a really enmeshment of a bad behavior choice, so not recommended. The other piece that was hanging out there was um, don't believe everything you can see on social media because... I have had some friends share with me how sometimes social media is very depressing and makes them feel lonely because they see all these people in love and having amazing experiences. And you've got to be really clear that, or be aware of the fact that a lot of people posting on social media about their love life or their business, something else, may be putting on their best, putting the best foot forward, putting their most um, eloquent and exciting and, how do I say this? most um, shiny, bright appearance of their love life or their, whatever they're working on. And two things about that. One is you don't see everything else, which leads into the idea about um, it's like you can't gauge your... I don't say this. There's analogies for this one, like writing a book or reading a book. You can't page your page six against somebody else's page 50. Like their journey has been longer than yours. You can't compare. They're different. Same thing is true in your relationship experience and the truth is what they may be putting on Facebook might be a facade so if you are somebody who feels lonely or helpless or unable to get what you want because you see somebody else getting what they want and having what they want by appearance on on social social media like Facebook don't buy into it one because you don't know the truth for sure secondly anything that happens there has no no reflection on who you are and this piece I want to speak about. I've done this one before about loneliness versus lonely. Oh, sorry, loneliness versus being, versus being alone. Social media can be, for some people, very challenging emotionally because they look at the, the pretty people out there doing the wonderful things and they don't feel 
worthy or deserving at that moment. And they can feel depressed. That happens. And I, I want to speak to this to make sure you hear this from somebody, if, if me and not somebody else. Social media is a platform that people are, are on. <clears throat> Let me spin it this way. One of my roles has been over the last 17, 18 years to be a spiritual practitioner at my spiritual center called Agape. And we would pray for people after service. And I see people coming back to sit down and pray with me, as in I would pray for them rather, who when I saw them when they were in the service and when they came to the back of the line, back to the line up to get prayer, who seemed to have everything together, perfectly perfectly put together, outfit, hair, appearance, they had lots of money, I mean, you know, they see the keychain or whatever it is, all these things are great. And they sit down in the chair in front of me and the suffering and pain they're expressing, I had no idea. Now, as a practitioner, I'm holding the higher foot watch for them and praying for them and keeping them in the highest possible place. But to recognize the human paradigm, the human experience, the packaging and the contents don't always match. So on social media, getting back to that topic, it's the same thing is true too. What they may put on social media could be the most perfect, ideal life they could possibly live, whereas what, you, what they're really dealing with is a lot more than that. That's just like the tip of the iceberg. So don't compare your life against somebody else's life that looks so perfect. It won't work. And it's not true. I can guarantee you that most people who put stuff on Facebook are not putting everything they're experiencing on Facebook, because that would be overwhelming. And secondly, they're probably putting the positive or the highlights or, the, or the, the peaks versus the valleys in their posts on social media. If you get that, you will be a lot less self-recriminating and a lot less judging of yourself, because you don't need to judge yourself on this. It's not your um, role to compare unfavorably with somebody else. So don't do it, please. Part of this challenge with using social media is the challenge, or no, wrong word, is the damage you can do to your self-esteem. Let's put it that way. And this is outside the framework of relationships. It's about being on social media and self-esteem. For many people, I've done it myself, to be honest. I've come through this place where I've watched other people on Facebook <clears throat> who I feel are comparable, which is maybe a mistake in the beginning, and judge myself unfavorably against them because they had more together, or they had more success, or they talk about how many clients they have, all of these different things that they put out there on social media. And I felt less than. So I had to do some work on myself. So I'm saying for everybody out there, I, I know that every single person watching this video has somebody they know on Facebook who appears to have it much better together than they do. So what? <laughs> Let me be clear about that. It really isn't relevant. The, the, the journey, the experience is like... I mean, there's an analogy, about, I'll use the book analogy, but there's another analogy out there somewhere about how comparing yourself against somebody else is a bad mistake. You can't compare your steps and their progress against their victory because you don't know how long they've been in the journey for, the, for how, long, how long they've been struggling or growing through their own challenges that look so perfect now but 10 years ago or the last 10 years have been hell so if yours isn't as perfect as theirs is you can't compare because you don't know what got them through or what they went through to get where they are now and of course that can be false too so my bottom line is I'm trying to put this together in a more succinct way because I yeah I mean to wrap this up shortly because I've got a client call myself Yes, I do have clients. <laughs> Not tons, but I have clients, just to be transparent. <laughs> the simplest truth is this. Social media is a place that people explore and play. It is not a documentary. It is not a accurate news report about somebody's life. It's what they choose to put on social media. So... I highly recommend you never use somebody else's profile to self-denigrate yourself. Or to denigrate yourself. Got it? I hope that's clear. That, if you take that on alone, will change your experience in relationships, in, in your life, and how you deal and express in life. Your own self-evaluation is and should be predicated about how you experience yourself, not how you experience other people. That life lesson, that life skill, will transform everything in your life. So go do that. <laughs> I think I've ranted about this enough, and I've given you a few ideas to think about. Um, 
I think that's it. I appreciate you being here. Thank you for watching, by the way. This has been um, something that's been on my mind, again, from somebody talked to early today and the Facebook uh, post a friend of mine did this morning. I hope this has given you some input. Thanks for the loves and the likes. I appreciate that. Um, this is my daily Facebook Live. And if you haven't watched my other broadcast, this is number 249. Yes, number 249 of an ongoing series of talks called Messages from the Masculine by the Feminine Heart. You can watch all of my broadcasts on my business page because that's where they saved without any other posts in between. They're also, on, at some point, will be on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, and you can look at the Messages from the Masculine playlist. And they also end up on my web website, which right now is going to be on my video blog, but I'm going to resh resh reshuffle it, make it into my blog. But all of them live there as well. If you have questions, concerns about love and relationships, please reach out to me. Um, and if you know anybody should watch this, maybe they're a bit caught up in the social media paradigm, please share it with them. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you watching. And, uh, well, thank you for that. Thank you, Brenda. I appreciate the feedback. Yeah, it is an interesting topic. There may be what comes up. I'm just finding myself complete in this moment. Um, oftentimes, stuff comes up to me two days later, so it might come up again. Each day is different. Each topic is usually spontaneous or within a few minutes of when I broadcast what I'm going to talk about, which sometimes is scary because I don't know what I'm talking about, just to be truly honest about this. And people say, wow, you've done 249 broadcasts. And I'm like, yeah, and, every, and almost every single one of them wasn't planned. So, <laughs> so I'm grateful for the inspiration that shows up, sometimes last minute, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to serve and share and inspire you. So as a reminder from my, my heart to yours, please take care of yourselves. You deserve the best, and only you can give that to you. When you have that recognition and understanding of yourself, everything around you will change. So go ahead and try that on for size and see what happens. I'll see you again tomorrow. Another topic, another idea. We'll see what it is. That'll be number 250, another milestone. And uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye.